Good morning. How's everybody doing today? Mildly hungover? Really hungover? All right, how many people here were at Caesar's Challenge last night? Raise your hand. How many people were at the Ninja Networks party? How many people were at the 303 party? <laughs> and he's up this morning, surprisingly. How many people were at a completely different party? Black and white ball. How many people were at the black and white ball? Thank you. How many people don't remember very much of last night? How many people are still trying to figure out why they're in Las Vegas? <laughs> All right. Now we have one quick schedule change to announce. Um, at 1 o'clock, 1300 in this room, uh, we have a different Max speaking. We have Max Mullen talking about how to hack your car. That's the one schedule change that we know of right now, 1 o'clock in this room. And just so that we can keep things on schedule and get everything going, I present to you Mr. Rago. Thank you very much. Hey guys, you hear me okay? Out there? All right. Uh, my name is Mike Rago. Uh, I work for VeriSign uh, as a member of their incident response and forensics team. Um, probably asking yourself, what the hell is a guy from VeriSign doing here? Um, <clears throat> I've been doing a lot of research in steganography for uh, the last four years. Um, I think a motivating factor for me uh, was certainly 9-11. Um, like many of the people in the audience, uh, I knew people that were there, uh, including myself. And uh, I happened to be there that day um, in New York City, uh, teaching on 33rd Street um, when all the, uh, uh, all the stuff happened. <clears throat> so um, I think that's been kind of a motivating factor for me. I'm sure you've heard a lot of rumors about uh, Al-Qaeda and um, Bin Laden supposedly using steganography for various types of uh, communications and things of that nature. Uh, and it's um, raised a level of awareness such that uh, NSA, DOD, a lot of other companies have approached me about some of my research. And so I'm here to demonstrate some of my tools for steg analysis for identifying uh, hidden messages within uh, digital photographs, MPEGs, and so forth. Um, so I'll go ahead and get right into the presentation. One of the things I want to say is, um, <clears throat> I'm sure all of you have seen at least one presentation on steganography, whether it be here at a prior DEF CON conference uh, or at some other conference. Where I think my presentation differs somewhat is that uh, I'm going to focus a little bit more on the steganalysis and cryptanalysis of those steganized files rather than just gloss overview of what steganography is. Uh, in addition to that, I think there's been a lot of presentations on STIG analysis, but they focused a little bit more on statistical analysis. Uh, my analysis is more signature-based, uh, and I'll talk more about that as I go through the presentation. Uh, so for those of you who have never seen steganography or don't know what that is, I'll go through a, a brief overview of that. Like I said, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about that. Uh, you can go to prior DEF CON uh, downloads to download other presentations on steganography. And then we'll get into uh, some deep uh, steg analysis uh, in trying to find those hidden messages within those photographs and those uh, video and wave type files. And then we'll blend that into cryptanalysis and distinguish between the difference of those. Talk about different attack mechanisms. Once you've identified a hidden message, how do you extract it? How do you decrypt it? Uh, what other types of attacks can you use to reveal that hidden information? Uh, then we'll talk about forensics and anti-forensics. Um, if you're using this as an anti-forensics mechanism, what methods can you use uh, uh, over covert channels and other types of things for communicating without being identified? Uh, and from a forensics perspective, how can you identify whether there's uh, steganized files on the machine that you're doing uh, forensics on? Uh, and then we'll talk about kind of where the direction of this is heading from, from my personal research and things that I know that other people are doing. We'll talk about some of the other tools that people are working on uh, out in the wild as well. All right, so steganography, from the Greek word, word meaning steganos, or in other words, covered, and the Greek word graphy meaning writing. Uh, steganography is the process of hiding a secret message within an ordinary message and extracting it at its destination. One major caveat to this is anyone else viewing the message will hopefully fail to identify that there's a hidden message within the communication. 
So, steganography has been around literally for thousands of years. The Greeks used to use this for various types of communication. It's documented that they would have a wooden tablet with a hidden message on it, covered with wax so that to casual observers, no one would notice that they were carrying some type of hidden communications. Uh, during World War II, Axis and Allies both would use various types of invisible inks, whether this be uh, various types of milk, vinegar, and other types of uh, uh, hidden type of um, uh, writing by which you could go ahead and use some form of heat or something else to reveal the hidden message. Um, I'm sure you all remember growing up having those, um, those games with the highlighter and you'd be traveling, sitting in the back seat in the car and wherever it was you were going and go ahead and answer those questions and use that highlighter and it would reveal uh, the answer to those questions. So that's a form of invisible ink. So of course the U.S. government is concerned about the use of steganography. Uh, common uses include the disguising of corporate espionage. Um, in addition, it's been highly documented that possibly terrorist cells are using this for communications, whether this be for hiding a message within a photograph and posting it on a website for another terrorist cell to download uh, and reveal the hidden message, which re may reveal details about a particular attack. Uh, and it's also a very good anti-forensics mechanism, uh, especially in child pornography. Um, I've had a lot of people approach me from various forms of the government about many child pornography cases that they've lost in court because they simply just haven't had the ability to either uh, identify hidden porn within other types of uh, digital photographs um, or uh, if they've been able to identify that there's something hidden there, they haven't been able to extract it so that they can prove it in court. So with modern digital steganography, many times the data is not only hidden, but it's also encrypted. Um, we'll talk about some of the different encryption algorithms that I've seen with many of the steganography programs that I've analyzed. Um, there's various techniques that they're using for hiding this information within a digital photograph or a wave file or some other digital mechanism. Uh, sometimes the data is encrypted and then simply appended to the file. And in other cases, it's dispersed throughout the file using uh, algorithms such as least significant bit and other types of mechanisms. Uh, but typically, uh, the goal here is to the casual eye, really not to visually uh, or technically identify that there's something hidden. But as you'll see through some of the analysis I've done, most of the steganography program fairly weak and easily uh, identified as far as hidden messages within them, uh, within the pictures that they've uh, hidden, uh, as well as extracting the messages as well. They typically used with Just some terminology for the rest of the presentation. Um, if I go ahead and I create a message and I hide it within a file, we call this file a carrier file. And this carry file is essentially used to carry this hidden message. There are a variety of carrier files used with steganography, um, all types of digital photographs, whether they be uh, bump files, JPEGs, or GIFs, um, as well as uh, video and audio files too, as well as WAV and other types of files. So there are a variety of steganography tools out there. Most, most of them are freeware or uh, shareware types tools, um, including S tools, uh, which has been around for many years. Uh, Steg Hide, Invisible Secrets, and the list goes on and on. There are some commercial manufacturers out there, including Steganos, uh, which I believe is based out of Germany. Uh, they've got a fantastic tool that I've tried to do a lot of analysis on. That's one, one of the few tools I haven't been able to, uh, to crack. Um, they have a, a full software suite that allows you to not only hide messages within uh, uh, digital photographs and other mechanisms, uh, but you can also hide drives and hide files within drives and all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, and they have some pretty elaborate encryption that they use with it as well. So if you're interested in finding out more information about steganography in general, uh, I've provided a couple URLs for you. Uh, I don't believe they're uh, the latest and greatest on your CD, so I've gone ahead and taken the liberty of updating this particular presentation with these updated URLs. Uh, I have sent these to uh, Dead Attic, who will be uh, posting these on the DEF CON site for your download. So you may notice some slight uh, slide differences between what's on your CD versus uh, what you see here uh, on the board. 
Uh, Neil Johnson has a fantastic site. You can download many of the steganography tools through uh, links on his site. Uh, he's got some great white papers out there uh, and links to uh, other uh, steg analysis people, including Neil Provost, uh, Eric Cole, and some other people uh, that are pretty predominant within the industry as it relates to steganography. Uh, Topology.org also has a link on it too with crypto, and uh, a lot of that links to various uh, steganography research as well. So let's get into the bulk of my presentation, which has more to do with steg analysis. Uh, we're going to talk about how to uh, identify a file that has a hidden message in it uh, and different ways in which you can do that and the particular mechanisms that I'm using um, in the wild. All right, so uh, when we talk about steg analysis, we're really talking about uh, the uh, identifying of the existence of a message, um, not essentially the extraction uh, of the message. Uh, that's left more to the uh, cryptanalysis portion of this presentation. Uh, steg analysis really just has to do with the fact of trying to identify that there's a hidden message. So we're really, in this section, not going to really talk about how to extract it. Okay, so technically steganography deals with the concealment of a message, not really the encryption of it. That's really just become an add-on with many of the recent steganography programs. Right. And then we'll talk about, well, how is this really meaningful? And that'll basically bleed over into the cryptanalysis. So by identifying the existence of a hidden message, we can perhaps identify the tool used to hide the message. A lot of the encryption used for encrypting these hidden messages uh, are highly difficult, if not impossible, to crack. So other mechanisms by which you can use to try to extract the message may be to identify the, the tool that was used to hide the message and then somehow use that tool to extract it, either through a password attack or some other mechanism. So common hiding techniques that I've found during my research uh, have to do a lot with uh, appending to a file. Many times you can view uh, a suspect file and actually scroll down to the end of it and see that possibly the hidden message has been appended right to the end of the file. Uh, this may include the password as well as the, uh, the message. Uh, it may even include uh, the secret key or something else used by uh, the particular algorithm that was used to encrypt the message. Uh, still, other ways of performing this that I've seen is that they'll hide it up in the message header up at the top of the file, or somehow uh, some type of dispersion throughout the uh, throughout the file, uh, either using least significant bit or some other type of uh, algorithm. So there's a variety of methods we can use for detecting steganography, many of which have been documented. Okay. Uh, perhaps some type of visual detection. Maybe we can take a look at the file and, and see that uh, just down at the bottom of the file or throughout the file, it's just not essentially all that clear. But really without the original file um, or the virgin file, it may be kind of hard to determine the differences. Uh, perhaps there's some audible detection, if it's a WAV file or something else. Okay. Um, Neil Provost and a lot of other people have done a lot of different types of statistical detection. Uh, or histogram analysis, and we'll talk about that as well. Or you can actually uh, view the structural uh, chemistry of the file. Uh, for example, um, if you have the original virgin file, uh, you can compare file size differences, uh, date and time differences, checksums, uh, and other types of modifications. But in many cases, when you're performing forensic analysis, uh, the original file is not there. So it really depends on the steganography program used to hide the message. Some of them will remove the original uh, hidden message file, and other ones will, will leave it behind. So I, I went ahead and kind of categorized uh, these things into anomaly and signature based. Uh, if you're intimately familiar with intrusion detection systems, kind of the same mentality with this. Uh, so as far as histogram analysis, file properties, statistical attack, visual or audible uh, type of review against the files, I kind of classified these into anomaly type of detection versus a signature detection, okay, which may be a, a pattern consistent with the, the program that was used to hide the message. So when writing my program, essentially my goal was to provide some type of accuracy. Uh, it wouldn't be good if uh, you were running this program and it told you that there was a hidden message in it when it actually there wasn't. 
um, some type of consistency that might provide better consistency uh, of uh, differentiating between one particular program that was used to hide the message versus the other. And uh, most importantly, in my opinion, to minimize false positives. So if we use some type of visual detection, okay, it may be next to impossible to determine that there's a hidden message within one of these two photographs. Okay. So I took a, a uh, graphic file of Cartman here, and I went ahead and hit a message in one of these two pictures. But if you take a visual look at this, okay, it may be next to impossible to determine that there's a hidden message in this. So you really don't think this is a viable option. Still yet, there's some other mechanisms, including uh, kurtosis. Um, this is the degree of flatness or peakiness of a curve describing a frequency of distribution. In other words, if you have a frequency of different colors making up the photograph, you may recognize a consistent pattern of certain colors showing up. And if you were to graph this out, it may show consistent peaks. If we use histogram analysis to evaluate this in more detail, which would include kurtosis and other things such as standard deviation and other types of things, um, we, this may or may not allow us to really identify whether or not there's a hidden message. For example, if they're using a least significant bit um, type algorithm to go ahead and disperse it throughout the message, you may see a consistent pattern to these peaks. So I went ahead and used histogram analysis to evaluate uh, a number of different steganography programs and how they hid messages within photographs and wave files. Uh, for the most part, it was pretty much useless. Okay, I've read in Eric Cole's book and a number of other books, which are, by the way, very good books, but they, they say that you can essentially use histogram analysis for evaluating a lot of different types of stegon uh, steganography and steganized type files. Um, I found the patterns to be uh, grossly uh, inconsistent. I really only found this pattern with one of the 50 steganography programs that I've analyzed. So I really don't think this is a viable option either. Uh, yeah, this is actually just PaintShop Pro. Yep. So there's a lot of different types of programs out there you can use for histogram analysis. I just use PaintShop Pro for this. Still yet, we can do other types of analysis comparing the, uh, the file properties. Um, if you do have the original file, you can do various types of comparisons, which will show uh, obvious differences as far as date and time, uh, even file size. Um, and still yet, you can also run various types of checksums. Okay? But I don't really consider this a viable option either. If you do have the original version file, well then yes, it, it makes it quite easy to identify differences in the file and come up with a, a potential suspect file. But if you're performing forensic analysis and the person had any kind of intelligence, they would have removed the original, uh, original file and the original message. And so I would think that if anyone was doing um, anything over a covert channel in which they didn't want anyone to detect this, you really wouldn't have the original file to compare it to. So although this, this is a, um, a possible option, again, I don't really consider it viable either. So when analyzing these types of files, it is important to understand what types of files you're looking at. Not only from the extension, but when evaluating uh, the file itself, you can actually take a look at various signatures related to the type of file that it is. For example, if you're analyzing a JPEG file versus a GIF file, the, uh, the headers are going to be different. As indicated on this board here, you can see that the ASCII signature at the beginning or header of the file, you can see the, the various differences. So then you know for sure what actually what type of file you're actually looking at. Uh, Gary Kessler uh, is a friend of mine. Uh, he did a presentation for SANS on steganography, which was pretty decent. Highly recommended. It's out there for free download. Uh, I believe he works at the uh, University of Vermont. Um, and he's done a lot of uh, research as well as far as steganography. So feel free to check out his site as well. So if you have a copy of the original file or a virgin file, it can be compared to the modified or suspect carrier file. Uh, many files can be used for viewing and comparing the contents of a hidden file. Uh, you can use everything from Notepad to your favorite uh, hex editor, such as WinHex or something else, to go ahead and analyze the file contents. Uh, this may allow you to convert it to ASCII and other types of mechanisms that, believe it or not, may actually reveal the password itself in clear text when the, when the message itself is actually encrypted. 
So reviewing multiple files may identify a signature pattern related to the steganography program used to hide the message. So if we use a particular steganography program to hide a message, it's going to hide it in a particular way. For example, it may append it to the end of a file. As part of that, it may add some additional information to the end of that file, which may be related to some type of signature. If we do a bunch of uh, uh, hiding of messages and then comparisons, we may identify a relative pattern to the way it hides that message, and it may be differentiated between different types of steganography programs. So I typically use WinHex for this. It does allow comparisons between ASCII and HEX. Uh, you can open up multiple files and do file comparisons. Uh, it does allow you to save the comparison as a report. And you can do various types of searches as far as differences between the two files, or even possibly equal bytes as well. It also contains uh, file marker capabilities. So as you find differences in the patterns, you can use various types of markers so that you can come back later on and compare the differences at a later time. So I went ahead and put together a case study of a steganography program called Hiderman. Uh, this is a program provided from a company uh, in France. Um, it is a pay-for type program. Uh, you can download a free eval. I think it's like a 30-day eval. So I went ahead and uh, as many of the uh, analysis as I've done on various types of uh, steganography programs, uh, this one in particular stood out to me. I thought it might be good for a demonstration. So I went ahead and had a graphic file, hit a message in it, and then did some analysis uh, with my favorite hex editor. Okay. Um, if we go ahead and take a look at this file, we can see uh, BM related to bitmap uh, at the beginning of the file, identifying what type of file this is. Uh, and then viewing the end of the file, uh, I was able to identify that uh, it appeared that the data was simply appended to the end of this file. So you had the original virgin file as well as the carrier file and compared the two. And we can see what was added to the end of the file. Okay. So you may see some consistent patterns here. Okay. And in some of the other slides, you're going to see it actually reveals some of the password and clear text, too. So although it used some type of encryption algorithm for uh, hiding the message, it went ahead and put the password in there, clear text. So I don't even need to reverse the encryption in order to reveal this hidden message. Just take the password, take the program, and take this file, and go ahead and open it up with the password. It was as simple as that. In addition, I noticed a consistent pattern to the way it, it hid the message. Not only did it append it to the end of the file, but the last three characters were always CDN, regardless of the encryption algorithm I used for hiding the message. Okay. And as I went through and did more and more comparisons using this program, found a consistent pattern, which to me means some kind of signature related to this type of program, um, consistently at the end of the file and the same three characters every time. So by hiding different messages and with different files and even different passwords, again, the same three characters were hidden uh, or, or uh, appended to the end of the file, essentially related some kind of signature related to the steganography program used to hide the message. So I've written a program called StegSpy. Uh, it's gone through a couple iterations, and I have uh, some more iterations uh, in process. Um, it is a signature identification program. Um, Neil Provost and some other people have written some statistical analysis, uh, steg analysis type programs. Uh, mine is more signature based related to, again, the type of program that was used to hide the message. Uh, it searches for stego signatures uh, and determines also the program that was used to hide the message. Uh, and also it will identify the location of the hidden message within the file. So if you're going to go ahead and extract that message, you simply just can then go ahead and open up your favorite hex editor, uh, find the location, and then go ahead and try to extract the message. So I went ahead and uh, used some different graphics and went ahead and hid messages in it. And through my analysis, have used a number of different steganography programs for hide, hiding these messages and have correlated these signatures to those steganography programs. And that's all built into my program. So if I go ahead and choose a file that I want to interrogate, 
it'll tell me, first of all, whether or not there's hidden steganography within this message as it relates to the programs that I've correlated signatures to. But it'll also identify the program used to hide the message as well as the marker position as well as to where the hidden message is located within that file. So if you are doing forensic analysis and you want to make an attempt at trying to extract this message, now you simply can just go ahead to that marker uh, using your favorite hex editor or something else and then make attempts to try to extract that message. So I've got a number of programs here that I've identified, including Masker, JPEG-X, uh, JPEG, uh, JPEG Hide, uh, and a number of other different types of programs, uh, including Hiderman, Invisible Secrets, and a whole slew of other steganography programs. And I'm continuing to add new signatures to this program all the time. Okay. Yes? Uh, no, it can't. Steganos has given me uh, quite a struggle. Uh, Steganos is written by a, um, a really good uh, cryptographer guy um, that's worked for the company since its startup uh, a number of years ago. Uh, it is a commercial program. Um, people have done steganalysis on older versions of it, which have revealed where the message was, was hidden. Um, they use um, something a little bit more uh, intelligent than just appending it to the file or hitting it, hiding it in the message or header contents. Um, uh, they tend to use uh, some type of least significant bit uh, dispersion throughout the file instead. So uh, in that case, um, uh, it definitely requires a little bit more statistical analysis. So um, I've tried to identify uh, uh, signatures related to Steganos, though, uh, separate from the type of algorithm it used to, to hide the message, uh, but I haven't been successful yet at, at identifying it, though. Okay, so I wrote the original version uh, in Perl, and then I kind of uh, cut it over to uh, Visual Basic. Um, you can download this program for free from my site. Uh, spyhunter.com. Um, like I said, I'm continuing to work on new versions of this program. Uh, some of the new things that I'm adding to the program include uh, additional signatures, constantly reviewing new steganography programs as they're coming out, trying to identify new signatures as it relates to those programs. Did you have a question over there? It's coming up on the next slide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've had some other people uh, recommend that as well. So um, I've got some cool information on the next slide we'll talk about. Or another cool thing would be a Mozilla plugin that just inspects every image. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I, I honestly can't take credit for this idea. Um, Eli over at Black Hat um, came up with this idea originally um, a while back while I was working on this. And uh, I thought it was a great idea, so it's something I'm going to start working on uh, probably as soon as I get back in town. So great idea, though, yeah. <laughs> so, so the goal of this would be to um, detect Stego as you're browsing. A um, little bit different than what you suggested. We're just kind of doing a spider over the web. I know someone did that a couple of years ago, and I think they comb through about two or three million pictures and found like one potentially steganized you know, photograph out there. Um, this would actually uh, detect stego as you're browsing. So as you hit a particular site, um, a pop-up could possibly pop up identifying, well, this particular picture on this web page uh, potentially has uh, a steganized file, you know, or a hidden message in it. So. Uh, some of the other features um, uh, would be the ability to, uh, if you're doing forensic analysis, to uh, scan an entire directory or maybe even an entire drive. So uh, um, that's, that's my number one priority at this point. In the next version of the program, I'm going to do that and then also work on the Mozilla plugin too. Also, I'm going to try to revert back to uh, some type of Perl iteration so it can be a little bit more Unix and Linux friendly. Um, but I want to create a GUI around that. I originally wrote it um, uh, just in Perl, uh, so it's mostly command line. And I would like to create some kind of GUI around it, so I'm going to work on that a little bit more, too. I just request that you keep the command line. Okay. I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I'm old school, too, so I think, uh, I think I'll keep the, the command line. 
Okay, so this does differ somewhat from a lot of the other type of research and steg analysis that other people have done, uh, which by, by no means I don't mean to undermine. Uh, I think Neil Provost has done some great research as far as statistical analysis uh, as it relates to steganography. I just decided to take it in a different direction. So uh, I've identified a number of signatures, um, including uh, Invisible Secrets, J.P. Hyde, Heidemann Masker, JPEG X. Uh, there are some other ones that are in there um, that I haven't really um, come out and told people that are in there yet, uh, simply because I'm trying to minimize the false positives. I'm still trying to confirm that they are good signatures and all, all that good stuff. So uh, as, as I feel comfortable with that, I'll go ahead and post all those updates to my website as well. Okay, so how is this handy? We really haven't achieved the goal, in my opinion, which is revealing the hidden message. Uh, so, you know, we've identified that there's a hidden message in the file, but in my opinion, really only halfway there. Uh, we need some type of ability to actually reveal that hidden message. And what I'm going to show you in the next part of the presentation is some tactical measures by which you can possibly perform that. Uh, so, uh, searching for the signature pattern uh, to determine the presence of a hidden message uh, and this signature reveals the program used to hide that message. So perhaps if you identify that there is a hidden message uh, within that file uh, and the program used to hide it, uh, we're going to talk about ways in which you can leverage that to then possibly reveal the hidden message. So this is where we bleed over into cryptanalysis. Okay. Okay. So as stated previously, Steganography, the goal is to hide the message, not encrypt it. Cryptography provides the means to encrypt the message. Okay? So how do we reveal the hidden message? Okay. So knowing the steganography program used to hide the message can be extremely handy when attempting to reveal the, the uh, actual hidden message. Uh, because trying to identify and crack uh, the algorithm, okay, good luck. A lot of these things use very strong encryption, but yet other ones still use pretty weak uh, encryption as well. Okay. Other mechanisms we can use is to try to reveal or crack the password, seed, or secret key. Okay. Practically all steganography programs use some form of a password or secret key or a seed to hide the message. If we can possibly reveal that, that may allow us to reveal the message as well. And uh, so although sometimes they may use some type of strong encryption, I have found that they use uh, a clear text password or a seed right there within the file. And by using that, you can just reveal the message. So. So far, we've identified the program used to hide the message, identified the location of the program uh, signature within the file. Um, but now we want to try to identify the location of the password in the file. Um, we've all also identified uh, the location of the hidden message and possibly the algorithm used to encrypt the hidden message. Okay. There are some password guessing and dictionary type tools out there. Neil Provost wrote one uh, called Stegbreak. Uh, only works against one particular program called JSTEG, uh, but nonetheless, this is one of the first I've seen out there in the wild. Um, it is now actually on the Nopix uh, Penguin Sleuth Forensic CD as well. Uh, you can check out Neil Provost's tool at outguest.org. Uh, he's been under a lot of um, political fire uh, from the state of Michigan, uh, where he attends college. Um, they've attempted to shut down his site a number of times, so his site sometimes up, sometimes down. Um, it's currently up as of my last check uh, last night. Um, some of the uh, uh, links are crossed out, but if you click on them, it still takes you to the site where you can download the tools. So, brute force methods or reverse engineering uh, in common encryption techniques. We did talk about modification of the least significant bit within the program by which uh, it hides the message by dispersing it throughout the file, uh, changing the least significant bit in a particular portion of the file. Uh, also, uh, password or other contents uh, are masked using some type of an algorithm based on a secret key, a password, or a random seed hidden somewhere else within the file. Uh, sometimes I've found this seed to be hidden 